Gold is dead. Bitcoin is going to just eat it up and replace it and steal all of its market cap and gold is going to go to zero. It's not really true. Gold's not going to go to zero, but even Goldman Sachs now saying that we could get a boost on the store of value narrative as gold continues to languish and Bitcoin continues to be more interesting. We're going to talk about that. A whole bunch of charts, a whole bunch of charts that are going like this, like the medical chart, flatlining. Right, you're looking at a whole bunch of charts and all the news driving markets today. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, subscribe to the channel and hit smash the subscribe button. Like, as Gerben just said, do that. I don't even know how you do that, but if you can find a way to do that, you're awesome. Do the like button thing. Do the like button thing. Do the like button thing. Let's go. Guys, uh, you might be wondering why I was a little late today. A, we like to build suspense. No, that's not really it. There's a dude, like, they're doing my yard, and, like, right outside my window, like, aggressively weed whacking. Just, like, weed whacking, like, like he's never going to ever have a chance to weed whack it again. You know, really loud. You guys might even hear it out there. Might even hear it out there. So guys, listen, I'm writing my book. Uh, I might have told you guys about it. It's called uh, Bullish at Resistance, Why Humans Fail. Not really writing a book. That would be the whole book, actually. You guys just read it. Congratulations. Um, But once again, Bitcoin has managed to just go dead ass sideways, freaking people out in both directions, as you might have realized, I said, like, was probably going to happen like a month ago, right? Right? Basically going sideways. As I put on Twitter today, the price of Bitcoin right now, actually, it's up a little bit, but it was 46,300. You know what the price of Bitcoin at this time yesterday was? 46,300. You know what the time, the price of Bitcoin was two days ago at this time? Ah, 46,300. You know what the price of Bitcoin was ago, was a week ago at this time? About 46,300. You know what Bitcoin's price was a wee, a month ago at this time? It's the day after the dump, about 46,300. About that. Yeah, that's about the price. You know, I, in fact, you know what the price of Bitcoin was 11 months ago right now? About 46,300. Not saying last year wasn't great. It was. But this should sort of indicate, guys, this is a hard market to trade. And it just requires tremendous patience. And I can see it. Like, I can see it in the way that people engage engage with me. I can see it in the amount of people that show up to a live stream because I'm not the guy who's going to, you know, pull up a chart, uh, pull up an exchange account and show you my 100x leverage trade on a three penny move and try to encourage you to do a bunch of dumb shit with your money while the market's sideways. I'm the boring old guy who's going to say, hey, man, sit on your hands and go play golf, you know? And listen, it's not great for engagement, but it's the reality. And I'm just going to keep telling you exactly what I think you should be doing or what I think the market is doing. But let's go ahead and dig into the news. And oh, the news. Oh, man, the news. The news. There's been no news. That's the other thing. It's like it's it's almost like just the world has stopped for Bitcoin, isn't it? Like nothing happening, not much to to talk about, not many people talking about it, no like huge catalyst events, no countries blindly banning us. Somebody ban us, man. We need something to talk about. We need something to talk about. But here you go. Here you go. Here's the one where, you know, I tweeted for engagement to try to get you guys to click on, come watch my stream. I said, fuck gold, buy Bitcoin, right? But that's that, Those are my words, but not my sentiment. Right. And this is coming from Goldman Sachs. Bitcoin can reach $100,000. Oh, guys. Wow. $100,000. Now our bullish case from everyone is like, maybe in 2022, we can get to $100,000. Not two weeks ago. We were like 100000 by December 31st. Or I delete my account. Right. Right. We were all too bullish to end 2021. But that's the way it is. When things are going up, you assume they're going to keep going up some more. Right. Assume it's going to keep going up some more. But here is Goldman Sachs. Uh, not always the biggest Bitcoin fan. So this is great. Goldman Sachs assumes a scenario where Bitcoin adoption increases as a store of value for investors versus gold. Now listen, it's fun to make fun of gold. 
not because we don't like gold, but because we really just don't like Peter Schiff and he talks about gold all the time. And just you just want to like monster dunk on his on his head, even though you know he's doing it for engagement and probably owns a bunch of Bitcoin, right? Even though he probably owns a bunch of Bitcoin. Uh, but yeah, so listen, but this is the reality, right? We've been in a time of historic money printing. You've heard the statistics. 40% of all the money ever uh, printed in history has been printed in the last 12 to 18 months, right? We've all said it. We've all said it a thousand times. We know that inflation is a problem. We know that money printing is an issue. And we know the price of gold has just not changed, right? Gold is a stable coin. Gold is a stable coin. It should have at least gone up as much as inflation, right? So basically, if you're holding gold right now, it's been effectively the same as holding dollars. You're losing value to inflation right now. Thousands of years of it working. I'm just saying right now, right? Right now. Do any of you guys trade gold? Are you gold traders? Are you like, wow, let me get in there on that XAU chart and uh, buy some rocks and put them in the, in the yard. I, have, I own some gold. I own some gold because like, you know, it hasn't always been this way. But listen, so gold has been a poor hedge. It's done nothing, right? It's done absolutely nothing. Um, but here's what they're saying here. And this makes a lot of sense. He said, Bitcoin can snag market share from gold over time as a byproduct of more adoption along with the potential from Bitcoin specific scaling solutions. Okay, whatever. Hypothetically, if Bitcoin's share of the store of value market, let's say that the entire store of value market, anything people store value in is one market, right? Were to rise to 50% over the next five years with no growth in overall demand for stores of value. Its price would increase to just over $100,000 for a compound annualized return of 17 to 18%, counting for growth in Bitcoin supply over time. So here's what he said. Bitcoin currently commands an approximate 20% share of the entire store of value market. So basically he's saying as boomers age out, that's a nice way of saying maybe, I don't know, die. And millennials, generation X, Y, Z, Omicron, Theta, Iota, Eta, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Di, right? Variants and generation names kind of all mixing in together for me, right? Uh, yeah, as that generation, obviously, they're going to look to Bitcoin as a store of value. If we consider the store of value pie to be fixed, Bitcoin takes a larger percent of that pie. Price rises, gold goes nowhere, and basically, Bitcoin replaces gold as a store of value asset. Right? Yeah. There you go. And that's exactly, exactly what many of us expect to happen. Now let's continue on with more, I don't know, probably bad takes about the about the about the coins and the bits. Market wrap. Bitcoin gains may be limited in January. Altcoin altcoins outperform. I think this should be like some altcoins outperform, right? This is one of those alt season situations where like five coins go up. 19,473 coins go down and we all like FOMO about the gains that we've missed on those few coins that have gone up, right? Generally, the market is kind of super sideways in my opinion. But yeah, here you go. Bitcoin continues to trade in a tight range on relatively low light volume. Literally a month ago, the day that price dropped, I said, get ready for boring town. I can't tell the future. I just kind of remember what's happened in the past. And it's been boring town for a month. But yes, January, historically a bad month. I think averaged down about 3% uh, in January's in the past, right? Not that bad. Bitcoin seasonality. Here you go. Minus 3.3% over the past nine years. Over the same period, Bitcoin registered a positive return rate roughly 50% of the time. Cool. This is not very compelling, to be quite honest be quite honest not very compelling but the fact is guys the boring may continue i don't even have it pulled up remember i drew that chart where i like drew this long range and then just price going like this a lot kind of what we're seeing kind of what we're seeing right but maybe brace yourselves that things might not get exciting soon says this article but that's not the only article we got because there's other takes hot takes from bloomberg Bitcoin's low volatility price drop may be nearing an end, guys. Maybe nearing an end. It could be over. It could be over. It could be, we just could pop right now. Pop right now. Bitcoin has been languishing. This is like, this is word salad. I just wanted to read this guys to you, to you guys. Bitcoin has been languishing in a range of about 45 to 51. I agree with that for a month or so now, but it may be about to rally again. Maybe about to rally, guys. Could be current's 30-day historical volatility is at the lowest since September. That is actually compelling. We should see volatility return. And the price is showing short-term exhaustion signals. 
This is based on TV sequential. First of all, when I read this, I, I read it as Denmark and not DeMarc, which is TV, right? The so-called DeMarc sequential indicator is flashing a 9.13.9 pattern. 9.13.9. When you hit a sell nine on TV sequential, you accept price, expect price to go up with a 13 candle pattern just above the 43,295, 44,500 support, which is defined by the 61.8% Fibonacci ret retracement of Bitcoin's entire June, November rally and prior DeMarc support. A lot of words there. Basically, they're just saying that TD sequential looks good. But I opened TD sequential and I looked at every time frame weekly. Almost we almost have a nine, but none. I don't know what they're looking at. We're at a three on the daily. We're green on the twelve hour. Green on the six hour. Green on the four hour. I don't know. Maybe they're looking at the one hour. Nope, not even a nine. So I literally don't know what they're talking about here. But the compelling part of this argument in theory would be that volatility is extremely low. That tends to mean we get a volatility breakout and price can go up. Next article. Bitcoin holds support ahead of Fed minutes. March rate hike probability rises. Oh, my God. We are still searching for more narrative. So let's talk about the fact that like for one day, stocks maybe went down a little bit because the Fed might have words that they're saying about rates and things. And oh, my God. We all know that event that inflation's a problem and eventually the Fed is going to start, start tapering and eventually slowly raise rates. Are we really talking about how that affects Bitcoin today? Oy. Oy. We, it's, it's amazing how much we can recycle the narratives. And what I want to tell you guys here, and this does not compel you to sign in and watch again. None of this shit matters. We're going to be tomorrow. They'll be like, ah, Jerome Powell in the Fed minutes on Wednesday took a dovish tone and perhaps said that the Bitcoins that are going on to the moons are going to be on a lower level of the moons. And maybe that's the reason that price has now gone up 0.0793% in four hours and has not changed in a month. Right? Right? Yeah, they're not, well, yeah, they're not going to crash everything, but they're just going to slowly, slowly start to do some stuff. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be still printing money. Don't you worry about that. Right? So listen, none of this matters, right? And Bitcoin is an uncorrelated asset, is not going to just do what Tesla stock does or what other tech stocks do or what gold does. It's going to continue to be boring until Bitcoin whales decide it's not time to be boring anymore. We just looked at the TD sequential chart. Here you go. Told you about my book. It's going to be a great book. We were actually, we might've been live when this was happening, right? I saw all these tweets. You know, a lot of people use like uh, not Wix, which is fine, right? I use Wix, obviously. But I saw all these tweets like, break out. It was right, right here. It was like, Bitcoin breaking out. By the way, there's no volume. Bitcoin breaking out, bullish, 53K, going to 100K moon, right? And I was like, bro, like, that's literally like the last place to get excited. Descending resistance, perfect touch there as resistance. And predictably, price just went back down. Guys, listen, we're ranging from 42 here up to 52. You know, on the weekly, I think we got to get above 53. 52, not even that exciting. Just killed a bug. I, that was like, I basically just did a full-on Daniel Sun, like hit it with a golf tee. Oh, begin a luck. Begin a luck. Uh, that was a really bad Mr. Miyagi imitation, right? So listen, 42 to 53, but then we can just do this, right? Okay, so, so that's the big range, but we really haven't uh, even, I expect, you would think that we would go back down and fill this wick and test 42, but here, let's pull a range from the highs here, right? We pull it to here. And this gets even more boring, right? And your, and your, and your EQ is all the way up here. But like we're really in a tighter range since December 7th. We've been ranging from 52 down to 45, 748, right? You want to get real granular? Okay. Yeah, we had a little pump the other day. Got us up to, you know, 48. Oh, God. Look at it like that. All right, let's make that one like, I don't know, purple or something. Let's make it, uh, let's make it green. That one's green, right? I mean, this is boring town population, all of us who are participating in this community. But you don't just get bullish at resistance. There are some bullish signals, right? Six hour right here, we have now another confirmed massive bullish divergence. It's also there in the 12 hour, as you can see. Higher low, 
lower low. This does look like it's building into something. But what I think, is, and we have it on the daily too, potentially. But what you got to think is going to happen here is that this is enough to give us momentum to get back to the top of the range so that everyone can freak out and get bullish. And then we're like sitting at like 50 or 51. And it's basically the same place we just were. And then we can come back down, right? I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but that's the thing. There's not really much to analyze here. The signals are very, very much mixed, very mixed. If I was like a degenerate 100x leverage long type of dude right now, I would have longed this right here. But look, you get hidden bearish divergence after the bull divs. Unless price can clear, I don't know, 47,998, which is very much possible. We are seeing an increase in volume here in the six hour with three hours left. If it can clear this area, we would invalidate the hidden bearish divergences that are potentially there, and that would start to look really good. If you, if you had a gun to my head right now, I'd say, listen, like we're at 46. We'll go up to like 50 or 51. We'll go up to 50 or 51, and then we'll probably like slowly range back down. So we see a major spike in volume in any of those ranges that I just shared with you broken. Very hard, very hard to discern what the future price will be. I think we all agree, just dollar cost average. Wait a while, and you'll probably end up wealthier than you were when you started. China releases digital yuan wallet as Bitcoin crackdown continues. Bitcoin basically not a thing in China anymore, right? They're clearly replacing it with central bank digital currency. They've banned miners. They're not really allowing users. They've banned exchanges. They're making it a really hard time to be into crypto in China. Here you go. China's central bank digital currency pilot is moving ahead as the country puts cryptocurrency in the rear view mirror. This is a pretty big story because the ECNY was only privately available for download before through a private link for people to test it. Now it's publicly available via China's Apple and Android app stores, which we know are probably not the real Android and Apple app stores that we're familiar with here because they don't like anything from the outside coming in. Right. But now people in like in Shanghai, Shenzhen, some other places where it's being piloted can now have open access to China's digital yuan, the ECNY, and further, they're making it available, obviously, to foreigners who are visiting for the Winter Olympics. Uh, we've seen a lot of senators and people in the United States say, hey, maybe athletes, our athletes should be banned from downloading that. And also, if you're going over there, please don't, because, you know, it's like uh, China's going to spy on you. Like every time you watch a TikTok video, Literally, China is like marking your social credits in the United States and spying on you and probably, I don't know, hacking into your brain or something via uh, uh, via virus uh, microchips, right? But uh, listen, China wants all of your information. We know that they're getting it already through TikTok. Let's not go over there and download their wallet for the digital yuan. NFT marketplace, OpenSea, valued at $13.3 billion in $300 million funding round. Holy shit, bruh. Just six months ago in July, they were valued at $1.5 billion. Now they're valued at $13.3 billion. I think it's fair to say that uh, people are kind of interested in this whole new NFT, you know, whole new NFT thing, right? Whole new NFT craze. Maybe it's going to stick. Maybe it's going to stick, right? So they raised five, $300 million, which valued them at $13.3 billion. This company was an afterthought just a year ago. And like, what's interesting to me here is not really thinking about like, what will NFTs do? And like, will my cartoons be worth a lot of money, right? I like to actually step back and be like, well, I didn't see this shit coming on January, what is it, 5th of 2021. None of us really did. Nobody would have said, hey, OpenSea will be valued at this. So what's next, right? Like, what thing am I completely missing in crypto right now that a year from now I'm going to be like, oh, I should have seen that. I should have seen that. Right, I don't really have an answer to that. I think it'll be more in the metaverse. I think uh, we're going to see a lot from you know decentralized social media. I think we're going to see a lot of action, sort of in the, like zk snarks rollups. But those things, zk snarks rollups, all those, those are very like crypto native things. Layer ones, layer twos. Is there something else that's going to happen this year? I don't have the answer to this. I'm curious. You guys might have thoughts. What are your thoughts? Is there something else that we're missing right now that's going to be like this massive mainstream adoption? Because if you go back to 2021 this time, and you would ask me, like, what's going to happen with crypto? I would have said, bro, like MicroStrategy, put it on the balance sheet, man. We're going to see companies buying Bitcoin. Right. First of all, that didn't happen besides Tesla and a couple others, right? That didn't happen. And B, like, 
Bitcoin was not the narrative of 2021. It was the narrative of the end of 2020, maybe the beginning of 2021, but the narrative of 2021 was really metaverse, NFTs, dog coins, right? All shit I did not see coming a year ago and all things that brought a hell of a lot more people into crypto than Bitcoin did, right? So yeah, the, the, the first mover advantage for sure, but some big competitors will come to challenge them this year. Fractal's a pick for me with Justin Kahn and Google Drive co-founder. I interviewed Justin Kahn yesterday. He's the founder of Twitch. That podcast will be out next week. And we talked about this at length. So Ben, make sure that you catch that. But he would tend to agree, right? He would tend to agree. DeFi kingdoms, there you go. I don't even know what that means, but see, there you go. Aggressive weed whackers. Yeah, those are going to be probably big. I don't know what that means. Uh, but yeah, guys, you know, game. Yes, I think gaming, NFT, gaming and metaverse to me are a crossover, right? Play to earn metaverse living. I think that's going to be huge this year and we've already seen it. But let's like start to put our heads together and think about what's going to be next. Because if you think it's metaverse, well, so does NVIDIA. They embrace the metaverse with new software marketplace deals. This is actually really cool. This is really cool because they're giving away their software for free to select artists and other creators to build virtual worlds and the metaverse, right? This is something that's usually $9,000 for corporate clients. They're giving this away for free to continue to build the metaverse as their omniverse software. Actually, wait, I have a video. I have a video. Let's watch it. This is, here, here you go. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool, right? And you guys know I got an Oculus for Christmas. I've been exercising in the Oculus. Like I box and thrill the fight. Like that wears me out, man. It feels real. You're in there. I played mini golf, felt like I was going to step off a cliff, got all kind of like, got kind of all like weirded out. I've been playing that game Supernatural, bro. I'm like on the super advanced. I've been doing it for like a week and I can chop shit and like punch and dodge triangles like nobody's business. Y'all don't know I used to box. I get in through all the fight and I just wreck shit. But yeah, I think that we're going to be largely doing shit in the metaverse. If Oculus counts, I'm already doing it. I'm not riding a Peloton bike. I'm not riding that bike. That thing is a coat rack. Peloton bike's a coat rack, bro. I'm in my goggles, sweating my face off, getting my punch on. You know what I'm saying? And that's, yeah, a lot of people get dizzy from it. A lot of people get dizzy. But you need to not do it drunk, Irvin. I've seen your comments here and I know that you're always drunk. I can tell that you're a drunk person, right? There's always drunk. But that's a cool video, man. And that's NVIDIA, right? These are big companies. Facebook already rebranded to Meta, right? I mean, we know exactly, exactly what is coming. And the Metaverse may be our big move of 2022. Speaking of 2022, guys, a lot of you watched. It's been my most popular podcast in a long time. But my podcast with Sam Bankman Free did come out yesterday. And we basically talked about what's coming in 2022. Right. So like here, let's move on. Miami Suarez takes helm as mayor's group at mayor's group with pro crypto pledge. He became the president of the mayors of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. But that's great for us. Right. Because we all love Mayor Suarez, what he's doing for crypto. And now he's in charge of like all the mayors, like he's the mayor of the mayors, the mayor's boss who's marrying all the mayors. Right. I, I don't know if marrying is an uh, is an action you can do if that's an adverb, but he mayor he mayors like crazy. Right. And he wants them to sign a crypto compact. The problem is nobody knows what that means. Nobody knows what that means. It hasn't been defined, but very likely he's going to ask these people to do what he's been doing in Miami, bring city coins to all of these places, start to adopt crypto. And I mean, he's in charge. And listen. Mayor Suarez has become one of the most popular politicians in the entire country. 
right? He's become one of the most popular in the entire country because of his position on crypto and being early. He was ahead of El Salvador. People forget that. Lots of mayors are trying to copycat. Even the mayor of New York was like, yeah, bro, I'll take my uh, my my salary in the bit Bitcoin. So like probably didn't even pronounce it right. But yeah, it's a good PR stunt for a lot of them. And I think we're going to see adoption at the city level widespread. And this is going to definitely help. And the final story, surprising absolutely nobody in the world. SEC delays decision on Nidig's spot Bitcoin ETF proposal. Here's the can. Here's Gary Gensler's leg. Here he is kicking that can right down the road. He has skinny legs. I have skinny legs, so I can't hate, but I'm assuming Gary Gensler has a very like weak sort of like leg and maybe like his foot kind of looks like a pitching wedge, right? Excellent Smithers, right? Don't you think of that when you see Gary Gensler? But yeah, we know a spot ETF is not being approved anytime soon and that they're just going to continue to do this thing where they delay, 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 reject. Delay, 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 reject. Probably like uh, most of you trying to flirt with that cute girl in uh Minecraft or Worlds of Warcraft or whatever people are doing right now where they talk to female people not in the real world, right? Delay, 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 reject. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if you got my message. I, I asked you out two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, I'm doing my hair. And then finally it's like, bro, I'm not interested. Delay, 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 reject. Delay, 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 reject. Right now, the SEC is taking the approach of the captain of the cheerleaders at your high school, right? Anywho, guys, that's all the news I got to you today. But have no fear. Have no fear, guys, because Charter Palooza today. Today, Charter Palooza. Yeah, Charter Palooza. Let's get some here. We haven't had any inspiration here. Charter Palooza is today, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Going to take requests from subscribers to the newsletter went out this morning and i'm going to take a look at those charts Made some jams for you guys. Guys, see you today, later. It's going to be great. Don't miss it. Peace out, yourself.